Hello and welcome to Vermin Hunters TV with me, Cy Pitway. Today on the show, after popular demand from the subscribers on our channel, I'm going to show you how I calibrate my scope and my rifle to enable me to shoot quite accurately out to the ranges that I do. And this method I've called the Cy Pitway method. It's an hybrid method that I've designed myself and I don't think anyone else uses the same technique. So what does the technique involve? Well, you can actually calibrate all your mill dots from 5 meters in 5 meter intervals right out to 60 meters if you wanted to within three shots yeah just three shots however I like to use the rule of threes and what I mean by that is if I was to shoot at a target at 60 meters a small target and I hit it you could say that was luck if I was to do it twice on the trot you might say that's fluky but if I was to do it three times on the trot then it's matter of fact and it's actually where the uh, mean point of impact of the pellet is falling so it involves three shots to prove you're on zero and my preferred zero with this rifle is 25 meters the reason I use 25 meters and it's only 177 is I don't get any old under to worry about all the shots I have to worry about uh, is old over you then do three shots at five meters being the closest you'll probably ever shoot a rat and five shots at 60 meters which is probably the furthest you'll ever shoot a target or if you are really a good shot in perfect conditions uh, some form of vermin species what's uh, on the legal UK register if you've already chronographed your rifle, it's, this is a lot easier. Uh, if you haven't, then you need to chronograph your rifle so it will take a few more shots, but obviously it's not part of the technique. Today, because I haven't chronographed this for a while, uh, it probably will be getting another chronograph just to make sure uh, it's firing legally uh, and I'm happy with the consistency of the rifle. So without further ado, I'll get on and I'll show you the rest of the technique. Right, because I haven't chronographed the HW100 with the RWS Superfield pellets for a few months, I thought, as I'm doing this tutorial for you on the channel, I might as well uh, re-chrono the rifle uh, just to make sure that she's still legal uh, and shooting consistently. One of the first points, though, about chronographing is uh, make sure you've got a safe backstop uh, to fire the actual pellets into. And you can see here I've got a soft piece uh, of four mica, and behind that I've got a pine fence, uh, and I'm also wearing. Some ballistic glasses so this if there was an event where a pellet was to bounce back which it shouldn't do with what I'm using uh, my eyes will be safe I'm gonna zoom in now so you can see the actual chronograph sometimes with this chronograph uh, you'll get uh, an error reading if that's the case I'll have to just turn it on and off and start again but for this demonstration I'm gonna fire five pellets through the chrono write down the uh, readings for each pellet uh, in feet per second. Uh, once I've done that, add them all together, divide them by five, and it'll give me an average uh, power and speed. So, the first one. Now I'm shooting off the bipod, uh, I'm not moving the rifle, so it's the same distance each time. I'm just writing down 772.9, the readings each time on a piece of card. And this is from a 200 bar fill. It was only 0.1 of a foot per second then different. Only 0.3 of a foot per, se uh, foot per second different. You see the rifle is very consistent so far. And that was only two foot, well, about one and a quarter foot per second from the last one. The first one at 772.9, that could have been a bit of a deformed pellet. I did inspect them, so what I will do. I'm going to put another uh, sh two shots in, so to make it seven shots, uh, and if the, if the remaining two are near the other uh, four, as in in feet per second, I'll scrub the first one. As you can see, they are so consistent. And one more.
that is pretty amazing uh, consistency for this rifle. So I'm going to scrub the first one at 772.9 because as I said it's probably a uh, deformed pellet of some sort which I didn't pick up with my eye. And the other six I'm going to add them up together, uh, divide them by six and get an average and then I'll let you know what it is in a second. Well I've got the results here of the chronographing session on my card uh, and I did end up scrubbing and not using the first shot which was the 772.9. The remaining six though I did use with the highest shot being at 782.9 feet per second and the lowest being 779.9 feet per second. This gave only a three foot per second total spread which is pretty amazing and just showing how consistent this rifle is. Anyway the average over the six shots was 781.816 foot per second which equated to using these 8.4 grain RWS Superfields at 11.40 foot pound so that's really consistent really nicely underneath the legal limit uh, so it's safe and it hasn't really changed at all since the last time I chronographed it it just shows the quality of these HW100s uh, with the German engineering involved in designing them absolute fantastic Right, I've come into the indoor 25 meter, which is 27 yard range, and it's so I can ensure my rifle's still zeroed uh, and shooting pellet on top of pellet at this range uh, because I went out yesterday and shot some vermin and I just want to make sure nothing's moved and then we'll carry on with doing the rest of the tutorial. It is important to have a real fine zero at your preferred zero range because the more accurate the data you put in, the better the end result will be. So I'm going to shoot a 177 pellet first and use it as a marker. You don't have to do this, you can use a pen and fire out the pen mark, but I just like to shoot at some of the diameter of a 177 pellet. That's going to be my marking shot. And as long as these are all touching, uh, I'll be happy. Right, I've moved forward to the 5 metre point and I've moved the car down level with how the barrel will be horizontally uh, once I'm shooting off the bipod. You can see I've just put a blue pen mark on there which is going to be my point of aim. I'm going to put the crosshair on the pen mark, uh, at the centre of the pen mark, knowing that the pellet, uh, from my experience, will fall low at this range. Things you have to remember is to change your parallax if you've got a parallax scope so you get a clear picture and also turn your magnification down to uh, a usable magnification at this close range which you would probably be using to shoot rats up mainly anyway. Right, so three shots then. As I expected, three shots at this range through the same hole. Now what you have to do is you put your crosshair back on the initial point of aim, which is the blue dot, uh, and then you look where the impact falls actually on your crosshair. So at the minute I'm on times three magnification. If I get down at the scope and put the crosshair on the blue dot and count down, I can see that that's one and probably three quarters mil dots underneath the actual uh, crosshair. Yep, 
yeah, probably one and three quarters. It's between one and three quarters and two mil dots. What that tells me is if I was to take a shot on time three magnification at a rat at this range, I would have to give uh, one and three quarters to two mil dots of old over uh, to get a clean and humane kill, and that is shooting reticle true. It's this uh, information I'm interested in. Now, if you think you could actually get a nice picture and you're happy to shoot on times five or six at the magnification, and then you do the same, uh, turn your magnification up and look to see how many mil dots underneath the actual scope's crosshair, uh, the point of impact actually is. Now, the, the two main uh, ranges, or I should say magnifications I use, are usually probably five and 10. So I'm gonna try magnification five first, uh, and I'm gonna write down that information, and then I'm gonna see if I can see 10. Now, I won't use 10 ever at this range because it's too close, but I'm just gonna use it uh, later on in Chegun Pro to do it my hybrid method uh, and use that data uh, as something to fall back on. So, on times five magnification. It's two and a half. And on times 10, if I can actually see clear enough, which It's very blurred. It looks like the point of impact is just where the scope starts to get thick at the bottom uh, of the thin part of the reticle. Uh, and I'll record that data now on a piece of card and use that later. Right, the next important thing we have to do is work out the scope height and it's from the centre of the scope to the centre of the barrel. I'll just zoom in. And I'll show you the method, uh, what I use, which gains me quite good results. There are other methods, uh, but this is the one I prefer to use. And the way I found is by putting a piece of paper or card underneath your scope uh, and your barrel like so. And then using a fine tip pen or felt tip or something, I make a mark using a ruler keeping it straight on the card. I do the same on the other side, keeping it as straight as possible, like so. Once I've made them marks, I then move the rifle away and draw a line between the two points, like so. I'll just move into the centre so you can see better. What I do then is with my ruler, I measure the distance uh, of the line. Fifty seven millimeter. So that becomes fifty seven millimeter. Now I know halfway between that is twenty eight point five millimeters. So then I draw a line at twenty eight point five millimeters. 25, 6, 7, 8, there. And make the line quite prominent. Like so. What I then do is bring the rifle back again and place the rifle in exactly the same spot as it was the first time. And obviously, from where you're looking, it will be slightly different because. Uh, the camera's not over the top looking down like I am. That's about spot on. Then, with a pencil, I put the ruler across the top of the scope and I marry up the line, what I've drawn on the paper or the card, with the actual mark. Uh, on the scope, and I use a pencil to do this, like so. I'll just zoom out, and what I'll do, I'll freehand the camera and try and give you a shot uh, looking at it as I did. You can see that if I line it up, you can see there 
what I've done, drew the line of the scope uh, and you can see the pencil mark here and I can't get the camera exactly in the right place for you but you can, you can gather what I'm trying to get at it gives you the exact centre of the scope this way uh, and now all you need to do is roughly you can do the same thing again on the barrel or because it's only a small item with a small diameter uh, with a pencil just draw a line where you think the middle is and then you measure between the two lines and that gives you then your scope height so I'm going to do that now So, looking at, looking at this barrel, centre of the barrel, just put a mark on the barrel. It won't hurt the barrel as long as you're just using pencil, it can rub off. And then using your pencil, uh, your ruler, like I am here, you can then work out the distance, and that one is 40... ...46 millimetres. So, you get your card, what you're uh, recording everything on, uh, and you write on there 46 millimetres. So now what we're saying is, the distance from the centre of the scope to the centre of the barrel is 46 millimetres, and that's what you'd enter uh, into Chairgun later on. Once you've made that mark, obviously you don't want it on your equipment, so you just rub them off, uh, and it's gone. As easy as that.